So Steve just moved our flooring. Our little bridge was here. And we've got a new bridge over here so that we don't have to step on the deck to get inside, to go through the companionway and to access the engine. And we are getting ready to pull up all this cardboard and start scraping the deck. Volunteers descend on the boat shop to help tackle the final stages of several projects we've seen Steve get started over the last few episodes. Scott continues to make headway on the hatches and skylights while Steve takes a hole saw to the housetop. Thanks for watching and liking the video, and you can help the channel a lot by making sure you're subscribed on YouTube and by checking out our Patreon page. Link is in the video description. You can see Cindy working on the saloon table here just before she left for her cross-country bike trip last week. Check out the end of the video from last week if you missed it, but Cindy's ride from California to Florida is all about raising donations for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. She's already in the desert of California, and we will keep track of her progress. If you're able to make a generous donation to help fund cancer research, please use the link in the video description to do so. There's a couple of little spots I still want to get. There's, there's some glue that shows up here, but otherwise it should be pretty good. Nice. Definitely ready to switch it over to power tools. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I just spent like the last half hour trying to uncover the sticker for the alternator. Oh, wow. Yeah, I needed to know the make and the manufacturer. Yeah. For the alternator protector and Nani paints their motors blue. Right over the stickers. Yeah. Isn't it just a Kubota? Yeah. yeah. Let the scraping begin. Do you want some knee pads? What's that? Do you want some knee pads? No, I'm good. Really? Cardboard's okay for real. Yeah, I have artificial knees, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bionic. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't bother me. There you go. <laughs> I've gone one, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> I'm halfway there and I've been good. Okay. Yeah, yeah.
Cleaning up the pitch is far from a one-day process. This first scrape and sand helped to spot areas that didn't get totally filled, and even this first pass took a couple of days and a few volunteers to finish. With all the help going on, Steve was able to focus on tasks that needed decisions made. Smaller ones like how to mount the saloon tabletop to big ones that are just about impossible to delegate. Well, I think it is about time to pony up and drill some holes through the housetop, which is slightly unnerving. I wanna make sure we get this right because there's a lot of work to do and KP really uh, went the extra mile and did a great job with those trim pieces underneath and doing the grooves and the overhead. And I don't wanna uh, pucker up that beautiful work they did. So what we got going on here is our on deck navs so with the chart plotter. And these are buttons and dials that'll run the chart plotter because when it's raining and gross out, the touch screen can be touchy like it is on your phone. And then we've got our GMI 20, which will be wind speed and transducer and a VHF radio here, and this can all be covered up. But we need to get the wires from down below up into here, and we also need a hole for the cowl ventilator for the airflow. So I've got everything marked out. This piece of ABS plastic here is gonna go through the housetop, and that way the wires can come up in this and down, and that way if water does come in underneath here or get in up here, it's unlikely to make it all the way down into the boat. All right, so I already reached through and traced out where everything is. And this is gonna be our vent for the cowl. Do we dare? Nice. Watching this for the first time myself, I sent a text to Steve saying that you spend seven years building a boat and the last few months and weeks are largely taken up with putting holes in it. He wrote back, just wait till I do the through holes. So that's a very sloppy fit, but that is okay because it's ABS plastic, which gets along well with epoxy. So we'll put that in there, tape up the bottom and just fill that up with thick sew. And that'll be situated and that'll give us a little bit of play. And then this one should fit a little bit snugger. Apparently very snug. And that's getting butyl. Yep, that'll get butyl. And this way with the Dorade box, there's the little dam in front of it. So if water wants to get in, it's got to come through the cowl, over the dam, and find its way down the pipe. And this pipe's got a cap on it. So if the weather is super ridiculously crummy, uh, we can take the cowl out and put a cap in the plate on the top and we can take this plate out or put it in on the inside. So we can seal the cowl outside and inside or both. Uh, and this way, looking up from below, you won't see any of the cedar or any of the hole. It'll all get covered by the flange. And you'll just see that, which will look really nice. And I've got two more of these for the Dorade boxes up forward. So this came from Victoria and it was installed in her housetop 
over the galley. And we are going to do the same thing on Arabella. So I've been playing around. And this is going to go right here. So this is our on deck nav. I'm going to add some bars or some slats here to make this a usable cubby. So I want to make sure we dodge that. And there's a traveler that's going to go across the house top. So we can't have it too far forward to be under the traveler. And the bimini dodger is going to come somewhere more likely between the traveler and the door aid box here. So with all of those things combined, it seems like this is a, a good place to put it. So I've traced it out. We'll pop a hole, grab the jigsaw, and make even a bigger hole in the house top. Big day for holes. This is going to be real fun. We get to cut through fiberglass and cedar and paint and fairing compound and nails. Stainless nails, too. Stainless nails. Not soft ones. So we got an old crummy blade in the jigsaw. So I don't want to destroy a new one. Let's see what we got. Grab another one. You be careful though, because that thing's screaming. So we've got a collection of old jigsaw blades. Too crummy to use for good woodwork, as you can see. But pretty handy in times like these. This is their uh, their last rodeo before they get recycled. it up a little more but do that by hand Although it is a mess to work with, the pitch is great because it can always be repaired by just heating the area and pouring in some more if needed. And it was easy to spot the voids that needed attention after the first scraping. All right, so we got the four hatch skylight that we're finishing up. We already got a coat of shellac on everything that's gonna be covered with it. So it's all waterproof and all that stuff. So now we got this butyl tape that we're gonna put on that's gonna add a sealant for the acrylic that we're gonna throw on there. Ooh. I 
a lot of room back here. Now that we have the acrylic in place with this butyl tape, it's all filled around the sides. If you can see, it's all nicely squished down. There's no gaps in it. It's all nice and smooth back there, watertight. Next thing I got is these trim pieces that go around. As you can see, I've got them labeled, marked out right now for where our screw holes are gonna go. Very sticky stuff over here. So, this one is gonna go in the middle. And I got these all marked out here. There's only a couple of screws that are gonna go in. And these ones are gonna go on top like that. And that's gonna hide all of that. In there, we'll clean up the butyl that's behind it. So, the next step is to just pre drill all of these holes, get them all countersunk for them, and then I got to go over with the acrylic and oversize the holes because it's going to want to be able to move back and forth and we don't want it to break. So, once I screw through it, we will bore out the hole in just the acrylic. And then this will all be held down with these number eight uh, inch and a half brass screws. The next day saw a new group of volunteers and Steve got them up to speed with where the work is at with whatever they end up taking on. These two were set up to sand down the spars that were built by Keith at Shipwright Skills up in Vermont. And finishing up the deck pitch will get thrown at several volunteers over the next days. Soon a group will come to finish off the dead eyes and before long we'll see a large gathering come to fair the hull. Big and steady progress is just a regular day in the boat shop from now until lunch. Cool if I film you? Oh, absolutely. Nice. Yeah. What yeah. was your name? R RJ. RJ. RJ Hill Valley. Thanks. Yeah. I'm Aiden. Hey, Aiden. Nice, nice to meet you. Likewise. Yeah. I've been following the project for a while and thought I could do something to help out. Yeah. Yeah. Looks fun. It is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for every time I come up, it's always ridiculously cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you haven't got lucky yet with the weather. Not yet. Not yet. Should have come on Monday. It was like 70 degrees. Uh, I'm the uh, ship manager of the Amistad. So that's, okay. that's my first first thing I need to take care of. So as soon as it's warm weather, I get people taking care of all that. Yeah, where is that? Uh, she's in Mystic right now. Okay. She'll go up and down Long Island Sound this, yeah. uh, this summer. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Boats all, right. all year round. Uh, try to, yeah. yeah. Much to my wife's disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. <laughs> um, the organization, they're called Discovering Amistad. Yeah. And they teach racial and social justice issues through the lens of the Amistad incident, mm -hmm. 1839 on LPA. I am not familiar. 
Uh, it was actually the beginning of the abolitionist movement, yeah. and it set precedent, uh, legal precedent in the United States that somebody uh, other than a Caucasian who came in f to the country f uh, actually owned themselves. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah, it was a yeah. really big deal. So it's uh, it's a great story, great organization, uh, but like so many nonprofits, you know, it's uh, trying to co cobble together you know, great, great stories and, and yeah. great projects with limited resources. Yeah. So I've been doing this kind of work for about six years, Yeah, mostly as a volunteer at Mystic Seaport. Yeah. And uh, so I've got a bunch of small boat work and other things that I've done. So nice. I know how to fair this stuff and put things together. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be learning a lot from you. Oh, and all of he's, us. he knows so much. That's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not learning anything from me. I think he's just happy that some, that at least I sound like I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I never worked on boats before this, so I'm like, this is all new to but me. But you're learning it all through osmosis. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So this edition of the show marks both my fourth year and 200th episode of Acorn de Arabella. And I want to thank you all for spending a little bit of your time watching what I've spent so much of mine putting together for you. Editors are often deep in the woodwork covering their tracks, but here I really appreciate having the work seen and recognized. Thank you for watching. And I'm down for 200 more if you are. Heh <laughs>